What informed it is the simple, honest realization that in our Catholic Church, the media culture is rather low. Media culture is rather low, generally. So, in order to beef off media culture in our church and beef off, beef off um, the use of the media, for evangelization in the church, the bishops reasoned that it is important that we build media culture in our parishes. So it started yesterday. We believe that all this program will eventually lead to not just helping us with evangelization, it will even help us also with our work, our life in the society. We've had many problems happening now and then about abuse of the media by our children. While parents are confused, they don't know how to manage the media use of their children. Through this program, hopefully, we will come to understand a little better the dynamics of this new phenomenon called the media. Amen. So, while we started yesterday, today is day two. And for day two, the theme of our reflection is building faith through listening. Building faith through listening. One thing you will discover about all the themes throughout the week is that there will always be something about listening, listening, listening. And why is it so? Because Pope Francis chose as the theme for World Communications Day this year the theme listen listen not long sentence not long simply listen because pope francis in his message is convinced that one of the greatest needs of our age and our time is what listening listening is a virtue not many people have it and in our world today, there are many people whose only problem, core, core problem in the world is that they have no one to listen to them. They have no one to listen to them. So, listening. In our reading today, therefore, the theme is based on the first reading, the experience of that woman called Lydia. Lydia listened to the apostles. The Lord opened her heart to accept what Paul was saying. And what happened? Lydia, because of the power of the word, became, was generous. Was generous to the gospel, was generous to the apostles. When we listen to the word of God, our hearts are opened to do God's will. Because faith comes through listening. Whoever does not have opportunity to listen to the word of God may not be able to know the will of God. And if we don't know the will of God, we cannot do it. So we must listen first to hear the word. Haven't heard it, know the word haven't known it, do it. That is why the summary of our catechism is, uh, why did God make you? God made me to do what? Know him, love him, serve him, so as to be happy with him. 
Without knowing, we cannot love, we cannot serve, and we can only come to know him by listening. Generosity is one of the fruits of faith. When we truly know God, having listened, we are likely going to be generous. One who knows God cannot but be generous. So that leads us to how do we preach the word of God in our churches? What's the quality of our preparations? What are some factors that affect the proper preaching of the word? <laughs> I must, not because Father is here, I must salute this parish that you've not completed your church, but you already have an effective microphone. You already have a, you know, you know that it is as if part of the uh, marks of Catholic Church. We pretend as if one of the marks of Catholic Church is bad microphone. In many of our churches, yes or no? It is in Catholic Church, you will see very beautiful church, half a billion, or up to a billion or thereabout, but when they come for mass, the whole microphone is <laughs> and everybody who carries the microphone must start by beating the poor microphone, which should not be. There is no need to beat microphone because if your microphone is good, all you need to do, if it's correct, or you see how this microphone is? Are you hearing me or you are not hearing me? Because it is good. And that's a plus to your parish. I think you should put your hands together for yourself and for your priest for making that possible. Why? See, it is better not to have a beautiful church than have a beautiful church with bad microphone. If you must choose one, choose to have a good microphone with a church that is not that beautiful. But having the two is better. That you have a beautiful church as your church is coming out beautiful and you must have a good microphone. So we are encouraging people that when you are planning your church, plan the sound system along. Because when people come to church, they come to listen to God and it is through sermon that most Catholics hear about God and about the church. There is one media expert, his name is Marshall McLuhan. Marshall McLuhan says that the medium is the message, the medium is the message. That means, assuming a woman, you bring three women to cook now, and they cook. After cooking, the one that does not know how to cook well, went and buy a golden bowl, nice decorated with ornaments, and put her food. But the one that cooked very well, say, ah, the, if you taste it, you will know went and put her own food inside potty, the potty uh, for the baby. And they now call people, yeah, come and choose the one you want to eat. Which one will you choose if you don't know? You will choose the beautiful bowl, yes or no? Because the medium is beautiful, though the message is bad. So, your message cannot be better. Your message is as good as your medium. And that is what in corporate world today we call packaging. Packaging. In the Catholic Church, in truth and in truth, this is the church established by Jesus Christ. There is no, no controversy about that. People who speak against the church only speak against the 
limitations in the church, the human elements in the church, but never about the truth of its source. But unfortunately, at times we are too weak, at times we are too careless to package the truth as revealed by Christ. So we are reminding ourselves now that in order to package the message of Christ properly for this age and time, we must pay attention to the medium. That medium includes, as we have recommended, that right from the seminary, our seminarians must be trained how to appreciate the media, how to use the media. Our seminarians must be trained the art, the art, and I mean it, the art of public speaking. Everybody talks, but not everybody talks effectively. Yes or no? Everybody talks, but not everybody talks effectively. And that is why, though all of us have mouths, there are times when we have occasions, we we'll go and pay somebody to come and be MC. What will he use to talk? The same mouth. But because he has the skill of speaking effectively, somebody will come and talk for two hours and you give him 100,000 and still beg him, manage it. Meanwhile, you have been talking since morning. So everybody speaks, but very few people speak effectively. Because Talking is natural. Authentic communication is a skill. Authentic communication is a skill. To be effective is a skill. And it has to be learned. So these are some of the things we need to note as a church. It is injustice for people to come to church with the hope of hearing the word of God and they go out empty. Churches like that, where people go in day in, day out, every week, without getting the word of God, without knowing their spiritual life is gradually damaged. They end up not knowing God because they never had the opportunity to really hear him. Amen. So, the next thing we are supposed to do today is to therefore ask ourselves, what is the relationship between this church and communication? Church and communication. What is the relationship? First mistake we make is to think that this is church here and this is communication here, that you can separate them. And in truth, it's a big mistake. So that at times you will hear even church people say, Ah, what's my business with communication? I beg, leave communication. My own is to pray to God. Uh, this is spiritual, not about communication. You make the biggest mistake in the world. And all of us must get out of that error. Because without communication, the church is dead. Talking of church without communication is like talking of fire without heat or sun without light. The church is necessarily communication. The church cannot exist without communicating. Why is it so? What is the essence of the church? What is the mission of the church? Is it not go, make disciples of all nations? Go, preach the gospel to all nations. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you to do what? So the church is a body of Christ sent to continue the work of Jesus as the Father sent him. 
when you go, what do you go to do? You go to look, you go to sleep. No, you go to preach. The life of the church is communicating God and his message. The message of love. So a church that does not communicate love is dead. Or is a liar. So we can't do without communication in the church. We can't. And a church that does not communicate is not a church, by the way, because you can't even think about it. So communication is necessarily an element that defines the church. So we all in the Catholic Church must stop the negative attitude to communication to just do as if it's one of those things. It is not one of those things. Communication is not one of those things in the church. It is at the heart of the entire life of the church. That is what Jesus came to do. Letter to the Hebrews says that in times past, God revealed himself through the prophets, through kings, through messengers, through this, but in our own time, he has revealed himself through his son. He communicated himself to us through his son. Media today rules everything more than ever. I'm sure you know that, isn't it? When you talk of digital media today, everything. If you are not there, then you are not alive. Everything today. You want to travel, you need media to book tickets. You want to go to market, you need media. You want to get in touch with even pepper seller, you need media. You want to go to school, you need the media for, for research. Everything, church, you need media. That is why today, we no longer talk too much about citizens. You know how the word citizen came about? People who live in city, citizens. Today we talk about what? Netizens, net. Because people live on the net today. No longer about citizens, but what? Netizens. If the church has a mandate to go preach the gospel to all nations, that all nations today, are on the net. If you want our children to pay attention to anything or participate, put it on social media, yes or no, and they will be there. So the church must be there. The church cannot continue to neglect, not to care about where the youth are or what the youth are saying. We must use the language of the time to teach the same eternal message of all ages. The message doesn't change, but the method must change. So the church in our official documents, as we will see later, in many, many, many official documents, have encouraged priests, bishops, pastoral agents, all of us in the church, to embrace the media. The problem is that the church is putting all those things in writing, but we are not really making use of them. You will see some of the things the church says we should do within the week. Amen. So the media is not an option. It is compulsory and an integral part of the life of a priest as a pastor, an integral part of the entire church. It is the task of priests and all pastoral agents, our catechists included, our seminarians included, our reverend sisters included, to carefully and creatively employ these new tools and new language of the media to repackage the message of Christ in such a way that it is understood by children, youth, and adults alike. This is very important. 
somehow in most of our churches till today our catechism class is still that we gather the children four o'clock on saturday four o'clock on sunday and we get our book and what do we do who made you god made me why did god make you god made me to know him to love him to serve him to be happy with you forever and, today, and so on and so forth and we notice one thing that it is usually a big problem for us today to get our children to go for catechism classes yes or no it's a big problem today from reports even from interaction with the children in the spirit of synodality we have asked them do you like going for catechism no why don't you like going for catechism class there is one word children are used to using now it is boring yes or no it is boring so how do we solve the problem it's a challenge to us do you beg a child to watch cartoon yes or no do you beg a child to watch cartoon as a matter of fact in order to get the child to do some things do your homework go and bait, behave well you will say if you don't i won't allow you to watch cartoon yes or no so that means the cartoon is a language of the children so why are our catechism classes our catechism teaching for children not presented in cartoon form so that not until when they come to church reluctantly on saturday and sunday even at home because many of the cartoons our children are watching parents don't even know the content and some of these cartoons are very dangerous very dangerous exposing the children to terrible ideologies which we ourselves don't know they are strange to us but these children begin to pick these ideologies as children and begin to act them you've heard of some social media sites that will incite the children to do some crazy things some of which lead to their deaths some of these things are also there in some cartoons cartoons are addictive to children and studies show that children begin to enjoy cartoon as early as before they are one year old today before they are one year old even a child that cannot talk to you yet is already understanding cartoons so it's a very powerful medium powerful journey that we must pay attention to and invest in as a church a child brought by the mom has been disturbing the mom i want to see father i want to see father the mom eventually brought him and the child asked me father father i want to ask you a question that's how he was doing father i want to ask you a question i say yes he said is is avita avata jesus is avata jesus in truth i never even see avata before i don't even know what avata is but you know say small picking no go just use sense mess old man up i say avata what do you think yourself he said eh, eh, is bigger than jesus now i said why do you say so it is then this young boy small boy told me that uh, avata is a cartoon image who is always solving problem and helping people so he can do everything here that is when i was connected to what he's saying and why he's relating avata to jesus amen when i reasoned small and i said yeah avatar is a good man 
but Jesus is bigger and better than Avatar. In fact, Avatar is trying to be like Jesus. This child got annoyed, though. Got annoyed, closed up to himself, and said, I won't talk to you again. I won't talk to you again. What's the conclusion? Avatar and the power of Avatar has been sufficiently sold to the child through the cartoons he has watched. But not the power of Jesus as such. So he prizes Avatar better, higher, and more relevant than Jesus. That's an indictment on me, indictment on us, indictment on the church. How much of Jesus are we exposing the children to? And by extension, even we, the adults. So we beg that we should embrace the media. One of the things we have strongly also encouraged when it comes to use of the media in pastoral life is to beg our bishops, our chanceries, our different offices, our schools, our hospitals, our parishes, all those in charge of these places should limit or desist from using their personal phones, their personal phones, as the official phone. One of the things we priests are often accused of is, ah, Father, you know go pick and call. You know, ah, you know go pick and call. And why is it so? By God's grace, I'm a priest of Lagos Diocese. And I carried out a survey of my diocese. It turned out that we have about 497 priests working officially in Lagos with about 3,528,000 Catholics by the official record of our chancery. When we divided that, it meant that each priest in Lagos attends to over 7,000 parishioners one priest in Lagos, by the ratio, attends to over 7,000 parishioners. Tell me, beloved in Christ, even if the priest will not do any other thing but sit by the phone, how many calls will the priest ever be able to carry? Picking calls of your parishioners, meanwhile, is important. But there are also those who are not because when a priest, when the parish has a dedicated phone line, it means that any call coming on that line is likely from a parishioner. If that phone should ring 10 p.m., 12 midnight, 2 a.m., a priest will likely check it. And because you have data of your parishioners, you are likely able to know, oh, this is a parishioner's number, what is the issue? To be pastorally available. But when it is my personal phone, who knows who it is? It can still wait till tomorrow. I can as well switch off my phone. And that doesn't help in some very serious cases and occasions. So we have encouraged strongly every parish must have parish data, every parish, every clinic, every school, every institution should have a dedicated phone meant for the institution and not the phone number of the leader of that institution. We must also train ourselves how to use the microphone, our laptops. They use it. They are performing a function. That function is important. 
But at times you will find where lectors come, they don't know just as I didn't know now. We have to switch on or switch off the microphone. Now, but that is part of what lecture, lectors have to be trained to do. Then how to engage the microphone. Some will think they are doing a call. They will put microphone for here. They are going to talk for here. Meanwhile, microphone is working well. And they are not concerned. But when we train them, we get the best of it. So, beloved in Christ, this is day two of our communications week. We are saying we will expose you to these needs. Let the discussion continue. Amen. Any question? Any observation? I take one or two or three then we close that for today. Please, the floor is open. Okay. Anyone? Yes, come forward. Two, three people, if you have a question, come forward quickly, and then we move on. Question on what we have discussed today. Remember again, building faith through listening. How do we improve subject? Let them come here. How do we improve communication in our community? Yes. Good evening, Father. Good evening, Parish. My question goes like this. Father say our children are mostly being deceived by the parents mostly that when they do something they will allow them watch a cartoon and for that reason they are always given that opportunity and i was wondering but i came to say then if they, there is a question i will ask how are we going to make our homes have like christian channels that our children will always be given opportunity to watch as this communication week is now. That's my question, Father. Thank you very much. Good question. Second question. Please put your hands together for that question. How will we make Christian channels available for our homes and our children? Thank you. Um, I want to ask, you know, it's, and use your microphone and speak clearly. <laughs> okay. It's That's part of why we are here. You see, when I was talking, you understood me. Yeah. But when you started, I said, uh, I went to her. <laughs> okay, that's uh, one of the reasons why I'm here. Are you understanding him? Okay, small. We understand or provide Christian channels for our children. Luckily, luckily, and very luckily, Abuja Diocese is one of those dioceses, few dioceses in Nigeria that have a channel Catholic TV and I will tell you the problem of every TV house providing content and I'll tell you why that problem is enormous because there is low media culture we want to believe therefore when all of us become media aware media literate, media conscious, able to know that it's not enough to just be consuming what is coming. You yourself can produce media content very easily. Then media content will increase. There are some of us here that are media gurus. If we can have, for instance, workshop for children i do that in my office for some of our children from durumi there and i introduce them to animations graphics media graphics video editing but if we can introduce if we can bring out money to train our children 
If we train 100 children in animation, you'll be amazed what 60 to 70 of them will turn out to be. Because we just need to provide the opportunity for our youth and our children. It is in their nature. So at times, getting people to sponsor this is the issue. But I know, and I'm very convinced, if we grow media awareness and this media skill in our church, we will only be the better for it in the long run. Because we'll be able to provide a lot of media content with ease. There are too many stories in the Bible that need to be adapted to the language of this time. Even through dance drama, through animations. You know, very interestingly, by way of cartoons. So that's what I think. We have the channel already in Abuja Dowsis. What we are suffering from is funding and providing content. And that content can only be provided by all, as many of us as possible, rather than just a few people working in that office. So, please support your uh, channel. You have Radio, Radio Maria here, and you have Catholic television. When we support them, they will grow and it will be better for all of us. Once again, thank you very much everyone for your kind attention. You are watching CTV.